and among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. As the signs of times are becoming clear, there are many prophecies being fulfilled. The remnant must prepare themselves to overcome the prophecies about their safety. The synagogue of Satan have no problem imitating prophecies to deceive the masses. They have imitated several prophecies to steal the identity of the indigenous black people worldwide. There is not a bloodline in the scriptures. The other species of mankind do not claim for their bloodline. Even Mizraim, the second son of Ham, whom the beast system acknowledged is the bloodline that all indigenous black people come from, the other species of mankind declared to be Mizraim. How can a group of people that came after the original people that are made in the image and likeness of the Most High be the foundation to the ancient bloodlines of the scriptures? And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan, By the way, not all black people come from Ham. All three of Noah's sons are what the beast system labeled black. The indigenous black people descend from all three of Noah's sons. The indigenous black people are the root and the foundation to all bloodlines of the scriptures. That is why the other species of mankind found black people living all over the world. Today, they deny the indigenous black people of their history to rule over the indigenous black people. The other species of mankind strip the indigenous black people of their legacy by rewriting history and stealing their land under colonization. The other species of mankind descend from the sons of the watchers and the daughters of men. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. The sons of the watchers are known to us by many names. The new name they gave themselves to disguise their fathers are the Neanderthals. The Nephthalim Neanderthals refuse to acknowledge and claim their legacy. They have rewritten history to blend in with the original people. Their behavior reveal who they are. The scripture said, by their fruits, you would know a person. The other species of mankind rather steal the indigenous black people's legacy to hide who they are. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. The book of Matthew talk about the signs of times. A lot of people mistake the times of sorrows for the great tribulation. The reason many people are mixing those times, the synagogue of Satan have imitated many prophecies that the people do not know what era they are living in. When the pandemic hit, the workers of iniquity said the vaccine would help stop the spread of the virus. Many people believe the solution the workers of iniquity came up with was the mark of the beast. You can't have the mark of the beast without the man of sin. Israelites, it is important for you to know the word for yourself. Let the word of the Most High sanctify you with truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, It is important to know truth at such a time like this. The synagogue of Satan have imitated the regathering prophecy in 1948. The workers of iniquity gathered heathens from certain regions of this world and placed them on stolen land. They declared those people to be the descendants of the ancient Israelites, even though these people do not call themselves Israelites. 
when the Most High gather his people from the land of their captivity, that is when they will be delivered. They will dwell safely in their own land and no one will make them afraid. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Have the people who made a return to the so-called land of Israel in 1948 until this day are able to dwell in that land safely? Have they been able to rest? There have been countless wars. Until this day, the people they stole the land from are fighting against them. Israelites and indigenous black people, do you see how the synagogue of Satan imitate prophecy to confuse the people? In addition to establish evil covenants to place the people in bondage, reading the scriptures for yourself and working out your own salvation with fear and trembling will save you from being deceived in the last days. When the Most High places people back on their land, no one can remove them. The Most High will gather his people. The regathering is not going to be the act of man like we saw in the beast system. Thus saith the Lord God. When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses and plant vineyards, yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. The Most High is going to send his holy angels to gather his people according to the book of Matthew as well as in the book of Daniel. The people that was gathering the impostors to place them in the land of Israel in 1948 until this day, were they angels? The holy angels are not racist, nor would they discriminate. They will do the will of the Most High. In addition, they would gather the real descendants of the Israelites, not a group of people pretending to be a people they are not. Israelites, you learn in the angel series that the Most High sent his angels to carry out his will. When you read in the scriptures, the Most High does this and that. It is his angels that do his will. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. I have a message on the regathering of the 12 tribes. Go and watch that video to increase your knowledge about the gathering of the 12 tribes. The times of sorrows are what we are seeing take place in the heathen nations we live among today. The wars, famine, natural disasters, nations rising against other nations. The scripture said it is the times of sorrows. The end is not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Although this is the times of sorrows, we should be vigilant and prepare ourselves. The prophecies are unfolding quickly. During the times of sorrows, our people will experience hardship. Our safety will be a concern. The scripture said that during the times of sorrows, they will deliver some of us to be killed. The Israelites and indigenous black people are always oppressed. Many people will hate us who teach and believe the truth in the awakening. We see this happening with the censorship most of our channels receive from the Satans and the people who work for the Satans. The people who are doing their job by carrying out the will of the synagogue of Satan to censor voices will be held accountable. They will be without excuse for tampering with the word of the Most High. The scripture said they would hate us for his namesake. 
Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. There are many Israelites changing their names. They are calling themselves after the Most High. Remember, the world do not know the Most High. The beast culture know an idol made in the image of the heathens. The world do not accept the Most High. They hate you just as much as they hate the Most High. If the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. The heathens hate that we are exposing them in the awakening. Some of us have received many hate mails from these heathens. Some of the heathens cannot hide their hatred. We see it every day with the countless stories of hate crimes against the indigenous black people. The scripture said in the times of sorrows that many false prophets will arise and many people will be deceived by them. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. We see countless false prophets in and out of the awakening. The house of bondage, the church, is home to numerous false prophets and teachers. The scripture said many of our people will be offended with the word we teach. I can't tell you how many times my own people say to me, I am twisting the scriptures to say what I want. Even though I show them the very scriptures I am reading from in every message. You would think the indigenous black people would be happy about them not being subhuman according to the beast system, but the apple of the most high's eyes. However, just as the scripture said, many Israelites and indigenous black people become offended when you tell them this truth. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Some Israelites and indigenous black people will do anything for white Jesus. When the Israelites in the awakening go to the house of bondage, the church, to tell their people the good news, or when Israelites share the good news with their family and friends, many Israelites and black people dismiss them. Some indigenous black people betray their own people and call the slave catchers to persecute their own people for telling them the truth. That is the hatred they will have for one another the scriptures spoke of. Many are fulfilling prophecy and they don't even know it. Yet they are being saved in the house of bondage, the church. There are Israelites who will see the hatred the indigenous black people have for their own people. The lukewarm Israelites who are witnessing the animosity between the indigenous black people will begin to drift from the truth and give up. The scripture said their love will wax cold. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. To the remnant, the people whose names are written in the book, do not give up. Do not let your love for the most high wax cold for the foolishness you are seeing in the last days. Our people have been engaging in foolish debates and rebellious to the most high from the beginning. Do not let the wicked among us determine your love for the most high and spiritual growth. The word of the most high said, all of our people who endure to the end shall be saved. The truth many of us are teaching in this generation will be taught in all the kingdoms of this world. When everyone hear of the truth for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same, shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The Satan's censor our voices so that the people don't hear the good news as a testimony to the nations for the end to come. There's nothing they can do to stop the will of the Most High. The scriptures will be fulfilled. The natural disasters we're seeing taking place in the heathen nations, as well as the plagues and pandemics, are just the beginning. There are signs of the times to let us know where we are in the last days. Sorrow is defined as a feeling of deep distress caused by loss, disappointment, or other misfortune by oneself or others. Jacob is always in trouble. Ever since the Most High scattered the Israelites in all the kingdoms of this world, the heathens have been taking advantage of them. The heathens was given authority to rule over them due to Jacob's disobedience. The book of Jeremiah revealed that it was due to the Israelites' constant disobedience, as well as their sins multiplying, the Most High judged his people. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. 
I have done these things unto thee. The Jacob trouble that is coming, the great tribulation, will amplify the violence against the Israelites and the indigenous black people worldwide. Life as we know it will end. The heathens and their king will persecute the indigenous black people worse than they have ever done before. That is why the scripture said the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble, is a time that is like none other. It will be awful, worse than what we have heard happen to our ancestors and a thousand times worse than what we are witnessing in our generation. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The day of the Most High is not a slap on the wrist for the wicked. What we are seeing taking place in the heathen nations today is nothing compared to the judgment that is reserved for the heathens and all who is an enemy to the Most High. In the times of sorrows, we will endure many hardships. However, nothing compared to the trouble that awaits in Jacob's trouble, which is the great tribulation. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. What we are seeing happening in the heathen nations cannot compare to the judgment reserved for the wicked nations that enslave, torture, and oppress the people of the Most High, as well as polluting and disregarding the things of the Most High. The Most High said he would judge the heathens for parting his land and taking his treasures. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. The Most High said to the heathens, Prepare for war. Your beloved kingdoms that you boast about, the first world kingdoms, shall be no more. You will go to the valley of Jehoshaphat to be judge. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. The Most High said, The heavens and the earth shall shake. The stars will fall from the sky. The sun and the moon will be darkened. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The present flooding, famine, wars, pandemics, and the countless other sorrows that are taking place in the world today is the beginning. Some of the hardship that is happening in the world today is the Satans trying to speed things up because they know they have but a short time. The judgment on the nations will come after the work of the Satans. That is after the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Israelites, do not confuse the times of sorrows for Jacob's trouble. Remember, sorrow is another way to say hardship. 
Jacob's trouble is the great tribulation. Nothing we are experiencing today will compare to the trouble that will come upon our people in the great tribulation. Nor is the disasters happening in the heathen nations today are the reserved judgment on the nations. The earth is groaning and will continue to do so until the times of the end. Israelites, I don't want you to think that you have plenty of time to get your house in order. Nobody knows when the end will be. However, the Most High has given us signs to look for to let us know where we are. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. From what I am seeing, we are very close. I have seen how the impostors are preparing for the coming of their Messiah. I am seeing in the mainstream media how the workers of iniquity are pre-programming the masses for this event. They are sending a lot of red heifers to Israel to prepare their holy place for the abomination of desolation. The impostor's Messiah is the man of sin. The scripture said in the book of Matthew is when you see the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoke of, take his seat in the holy place. That is the start of the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. When the men of sin comes, now Jacob is in big trouble. Just as you heard in the scriptures, it will be trouble like never before. If we were in Jacob's trouble right now, you and I wouldn't be walking around freely nor would we be able to fellowship. The Most High has revealed a lot about Daniel in the past few weeks in the Angel series. Daniel is a prophet the Most High shared a lot of end time prophecies with. The abomination of desolation, the book of Matthew said Daniel spoke of, is the man of sin. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. And shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. During the Great Tribulation, the book of Daniel said the people that do know the Most High will be strong. All of our people that do understand will instruct many. However, some will fall by the sword, according to the scriptures. Some will fall by fire and by captivity, which would be imprisonment. Some will be robbed for many days. You will be attacked and persecuted in Jacob's trouble, the Great Tribulation, under the command of the men of sin. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help but many shall cleave to them with flatteries and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. According to the book of Daniel, as well as many other scriptures, the Most High will save his people. The deliverance of our people is after the tribulation. Our deliverer will come after the fallen away and the man of sin make his appearance and fulfill his role in the end times. The scripture said, let no man deceive you. Israelites, you're not going to be delivered until after the work of the Satans are complete. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 
who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The book of Daniel, as well as the book of Thessalonians and Revelation, said the man of sin would exalt himself, blaspheme the Most High, declare himself to be the Most High. Who is the Satan that said he will exalt himself above the Most High? The book of Daniel also referred to the men of sin as the king of the north. Where did Satan said he would stand in the mount of the congregation? The scripture said in the sides of the north. Let the word of the Most High reveal the truth. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The world recently crowned their king in the sides of the north. The new crowned king seems to be an angry bird. The men of sin, whom some call the Antichrist, he will have power to do great miracles, but not from his own accord. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The book of Revelation revealed the first beast who would speak blasphemies against the Most High and exalt himself was given power from the dragon. We all know who the dragon is. The beast also was given authority to war with the people of the Most High to overcome them. He was also given power over all nations. Remember, the Most High appoint kings and he dethroned them as well. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, Israelites, I hope it's all coming together for you. The second beast will cause the people to receive the mark of the beast. All of this is happening in the tribulation period. The beast will cause the people to worship the image of the first beast. All who don't worship the image of the beast will be killed. The scripture said the people who will worship the beast and the image are all the people whose names are not written in the book of life. All the wicked among us and all who love the beast culture will bow down and worship the beast, their king. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Israelites, we must look for the signs of times. The coming of the imposter's Messiah is a great sign of the times. The heathens are preparing to build a temple to receive their Messiah. Although we are living in the times of sorrows, the times of sorrows is also a part of the end times. It's a matter of time before the men of sin make his appearance. Trust me when I say the synagogue of Satan is very close to revealing this Satan. We all want to go home. However, we cannot skip steps. The Most High gave us the signs for a reason. The hardship many of our people are facing, as well as the nations, are a part of the process. The earth is groaning because it wants to be set free from sin. As a result of the groaning, disaster is taking place in the earth. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. But we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. 
all of the Most High's creation is living and is giving glory to the Most High. Look at it in this perspective. The ground we take for granted consists of grass, all sorts of plants, dirt, and rocks, as well as precious minerals and other elements. To some people, these creations of the Most High are objects that don't speak. Yet dirt have the power to grow plants and food for you to eat. The dirt, trees, plants, and everything we see that the Most High created are living. The living creatures of the Most High worship the Father and petition the Most High. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice in all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. The human population of the Most High's creation is not the only creatures of the Most High that worship. The animals and the angels worship as well. If you don't believe dirt and the other creations of the Most High petition the Most High, you, the people who are made in the image of the Most High, are talking dirt that came from the very ground you look past. You're talking because the Most High breathed the breath of life into you and you became a living, talking being. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. When you pass away, your body returns to the ground. From the dirt the Most High created his people, and to dirt they will return. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The scripture said, all of the Most High's creation groan. The earth is being destroyed by the dark powers of this world, as well as by the people who run this world and live in this world. Therefore, the earth is groaning to be delivered from the abominations happening in this world. Israelites, even though we know the Most High promised to save us, we have to do our part. We must prepare ourselves to stand against the enemies. When the workers of iniquity begin to imitate prophecy to get the world to bow down to the king of the north, the men of sin, some call him the Antichrist, we have to know what the word said to not be deceived by the Satans. The times of sorrows is the beginning of the end times. A lot of prophecy will be fulfilled. We as the people of the Most High must use discernment as the signs of the times make itself known to us. Nothing we are seeing today can compare to the judgment reserved for the wicked in their kingdoms. The day of the Most High is terrible. Who can endure it? The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man, shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Israelites, the life you're living now is considered privilege compared to the life the Israelites in the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble, will endure. The synagogue of Satan are trying to fulfill the scriptures according to their own accord. In the mix of them trying to fulfill the scriptures to solidify themselves as the people of the Most High, they are fulfilling other scriptures. The heathens believe they are preparing for their Messiah. Little do they know they are preparing for the abomination of desolation. The truth shall set you free. The heathens are under a strong delusion. Israelites, don't get caught up on how the heathens tell the story. The heathens do not know the Most High. Israelites, have an ear to hear and an eye to see the prophecies of the Most High being unfold the way it was written. All things written must be fulfilled. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. <laughs>